Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, good morning and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a beautiful day to discover an all-American pickup truck. Over here in Europe, this is something pretty unusual and it will actually only be the second pickup truck that I've ever driven in my life. But this is the Dodge Ram 1500 Laramie that I picked up earlier today from AEC, the importers here in Europe, to learn about today, have an introduction to the world of pickups. So I'm going to show you around the car and believe me, there are a lot of storage buckets, a lot of surprise features and unusual things about it. And then we'll go for a drive as well on the autobahns where I kind of expect that we might be able to hit the VMAX on the car as well. So let's get started then and check out the Dodge Ram 1500 Laramie. Like I say then, this is actually a pretty unusual thing for me to be driving. I know this is strange, but this is probably rarer in Europe than a Ferrari or a supercar. So let's explore it first to kick things off. It's the Ram 1500. That means up front, we've got a 5.7 litre V8 making over 400 horsepower. This is the Laramie specification. So it starts with the big horn, then the Laramie, and then up top you have a long horn and a limited edition version. The Laramie has upgraded interior some nice technology this also has the sport appearance pack which means if we come around towards the front you get the mono color scheme the body color painted bumpers the grille as well it looks mean and aggressive of course the thing is huge it's about two and a half tons in fact but what this is about of course is practicality and lugging a lot of stuff around in the back 1700 liters of luggage capacity to put that into perspective more than double say the ferrari gtc4 lusso in my garage more than triple the new McLaren GT. In the back, you can also fold the seats down in peculiar ways. It's also got the ability for a 1,000 ton payload as well as towing a three and a half ton uh, trailer or whatever it may be behind you. So uh, quite a um, usable monster, I think we can call it. There's also a pretty decent amount of tech going on in here. So let me just come around. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do, because I just think this is cool, because we can't normally do it on a European car, take the key, double press of this, and listen. It starts itself up remotely. Nobody inside. I know in America that's actually become quite a normal thing, but over here, it's not particularly common. You can also turn it off from the key. Done. Just like that, if you want to preheat up the car, you've also got a button here, which if you press it twice, lowers the car, lowers the ride height, so that then getting in and out is actually easier. You can see it sinking down. This car has the off-road package, which means it's got four different ride height modes as well. Trust me, there's a lot going on, uh, and it can do an awful lot. We won't necessarily be going off-roading with it today. Let me just come around, show you a little bit of the interior. I've come to the wrong side. It is, of course, a left-hand drive car, but you've got the big 12-inch touchscreen display here. You've got storage buckets absolutely galore. Even in the back, look at this. If you're wondering where to put things, well, you've got no shortage because even these seats, if you pull the lever here, fold up. Yeah, you've got a uh, kind of traditional style boot. And actually, they also, we fold them back down. You can pull them and uh, recline the rear seats by eight degrees as well. Then in the very back, if I come through here, it's currently locked, but this is fitted by AEC. So they do a few modifications, all the conversions and everything that's required to uh, homologate the cars here in Europe. Just put the key in here, unlock it. We can lift up the cover there then fold down the tailgate and there you have a vast cavern of space to use in the back that is a lot of luggage capacity well it's a pickup truck right with the uh, cover here to lock it down you can also have a few different options for um, trays and uh, dividers to stop things sliding around but that's basically why you can use the back seats and then uh you can just fold this back up actually i might climb in here just because it's fun you could put a mattress in have a little uh, snooze in the back ac this is quite random isn't it actually here we are inside the back of the pickup. You could have it without this, should you prefer, but of course it gives you the uh, safe knowledge that the things in the back are all safely tucked away. So, yes, I'm just learning as I go, playing around a touch. Let's close this back down. I think I've got to uh, make sure it's shut on both sides. This is a bit of a challenge. There we go, one side down. And the other side, lock it, done and all the stuff in the back would be secure away. So let's come through again then. Come to the inside. I'm gonna start the car up. The step folds out, nice equipment level. The Laramie gives you the upgraded seats. Just take a seat in here as well. 
I'm gonna start the car up, just the button here, foot on the brake. Burbles into life. You can see the screen here, you've got a split screen style view as well. Of course, it's very, very bright today. Naturally, being an off-roader, you've got a whole series of different modes. There's an eight-speed automatic gearbox controlled by that toggle. You've got four-wheel drive auto, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low, uh, your different drivetrain settings. You can also do the axle lock uh, if you're stuck and need the axles to be linked up. But it's basically, it's a storage dream. You've got a storage bucket up here with a 12 volt socket. Down here, you've got uh, this contraption which allows you to basically pop your phone in. This is kind of cool. And if you had a cable coming out the bottom of it, the cable would go through this gap at the bottom. There's also a full US plug socket down here, 115 volt socket. This. Uh, unit slides forwards and backwards with a ginormous you could put a laptop in here or something and then a uh, cup holders storage bucket there this actually opens up more storage space down at the back even a, a, a flap here to hold things a little bit more and if we close this down you can also open just the top section of it usb charging points everywhere usb-c full usb an aux plug you, you basically don't run out of storage options. Then over this side, that's this. This compartment opens as well, a little secret compartment that you've got up there. There's also the traditional glove box full of papers and things at the moment. The doors, you've got an upper storage bucket. You've got a lower storage bucket, more cup holders. Actually, wait a second. Two cup holders, four, six cup holders just in the front. Any more tucked away underneath? Six cup holders. There's even a CD slot. Um, I don't think I've put a CD in a car for a very long time, but still fun to have. The dashboard, you've got the uh, nice kind of analog displays flanking the digital display in the center where you can go through a lot of different screens, as you would imagine, screens and displays and the like. And um, given the car is warm, just listen to this for a second. Not bad, hey, not bad. Then if we come around just to uh, open up the bonnet, show you the engine for a second. 5.7 litre V8. If I can find the catch somewhere in here. There we go, got it. Oh, he says. There we go. There's a lot of space around it, a lot of space around it. It's also supported by a 12 volt electrical generator, which uh, charges with brake regeneration and um, helps give a little bit more instant power. So that's quite clever as well. 401 horsepower, 556 Newton meters of torque. Uh, in total. Of course, it's not going to be the quickest thing in the world, but it drives surprisingly like a normal car. So, new modern headlights, LED headlights. I'm going to close this back down. And uh, I think it's going to be time to take it out. This car is Patriot Blue, um, which is a very nice deep metallic blue. And um, yes, unusual to have something like this wearing a German number plate here in Europe, ready to be experienced. So let's step on in and take it out and see what it's like to drive. I'm going to bring it back into life. Um, of course, we've brought the car out to a bit of farmland where we're kicking things off, which is probably very much in its habitat. You know, we've got the big hay bales right in front. The auto barn is on that viaduct just over that away. And over that side is a McDonald's. Feeling very American right now. So I'm not gonna lie, the feel of materials, it could be a bit more premium and there are more premium versions. The steering wheel is very nice, heated steering. We've got heated, puff rated, cooling, ventilated, everything, seats, multi-way, lumbar, but the, the other materials, not that much padding to them. And this is really kind of plasticky and mm, not that nice. But then tech is pretty decent, it has to be said. So two wheel drive mode, of course, um, that's how we'll kick things off. Spin this into drive, nice and easy. And uh, now actually, before I do that, let me just pop it into neutral. It's the The fact it does that, I'm not necessarily sure though that that will correlate to go in the same way. It might be a bit, I would say, GT8-esque in this respect in that lots of noise, not necessarily moving particularly fast, maybe even worse than that. But let's um, head on down, go for a little drive and uh, we'll start learning a little bit more of what it's like. We've got our four different ride heights, I just realized. Um, it's currently in Aero, which is number two. I think the bottom one is easy entry exit, which you can do from the key. And then if we go up higher, you have normal and then you have off-road mode. Now we could go for a proper off-road. I mean, we're in kind of the right environment for it, but that probably wouldn't be very sociable for the farmers of this land around us. So let's head on out then, find some roads and uh, have some fun. My first impression, is that it's genuinely quieter in here than I expected. Now, you don't have any paddle shifters or anything like that, I don't think, so I can't drive manually, just an automatic. 
uh, eight speed auto. It kicks down basically when you push your foot down to the bottom of the floor. It will drop some gears and sound pretty enthusiastic. But cruising along, you feel so huge. I mean, normal SUVs go past and we're like, I, I, I don't know, we're like some kind of monster truck in comparison. This thing is so tall. Rides over the bumps, you know, you wouldn't be able to do that in say the Santa or the 675 or something. The front ends would just be scraping on the ground. In here, even just crawling up at 50 kilometers an hour, there's a lot of noise and um, not all that much craziness. The mirrors, because of how big the car is, obviously have that second um, bit of mirror to give you a wider angle. Uh, but here we go then, out towards the German autobahns to uh, see what this beast has got in it. And we're more at home with the uh, articulated trucks. Right, foot down, foot down, there we go. There we go, there's the sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a little bit silly. So it's speed limited here, but let's get up towards the speed limit. Wow. Those shift sounds are only going 120 kilometers per hour. That is just entertaining, but it's actually got a lot of safety systems as well, like the um, braking assist up front, the sensors that see if something's happening in front of you, and it will brake the car right down to zero kilometers per hour. We've obviously got adaptive cruise control as well, using the sensors. It, it's a decently comfortable car to cruise in, and AEC have also fitted an exhaust switch. So I've got a button just to the left of the steering column, which I can do to make it quieter. So now it's just got a little bit quieter, and it gets a little bit noisier again. So I don't know if you can necessarily hear that, but under load, of course, acceleration while driving, you get more of the difference. Yeah, entertainment and giggles so far, and surprisingly normal to drive. It doesn't, I mean, it's no heavier than a Cullinan or something, right? Or a big, heavy SUV. Um, so it drives, I, I don't know, I had in my mind that it was gonna be more like a, a truck and less like a normal car. Whereas in reality, here we are, just driving along, having a normal time, and um, in quite a lot of comfort with great visibility. You've got the huge hump of the engine bay in front of you, which, as we saw, it's not all that packed in there, but it does look cool, and looking cool is half the fun, right? Uh, so, can't complain. Let's keep going. Let's hopefully find a de-restricted section and have some fun. And there we have that lovely sign that tells us the road is de-restricted. So I'll let this car go past. Put my foot down. We're just so tall, we're following an Arteon, which is normally a big car, and we are absolutely swamping it in width and length, and of course height, it's not an SUV, it's a saloon. Um, hopefully, here we go, oh no, he was about to move over, hopefully we will get a stretch where we can do this, and uh, yeah, it's opening up in front of us. Come on, come on, we want to see what this thing can do. We're going 150 kilometers per hour. Now normally if I'm doing a VMAX run on an autobahn, we'd be aiming for, well not aiming, it's never an aim, it depends what the safety allows you to do, but we would be driving at 270, 280, maybe 300. In this case, it's not gonna be that. Oh, we've been pulled out on 160. You can get so much noise though, so much. And you barely, the numbers barely climb at this speed. Oh, just endless fun. And it's clear, foot down 150, 155, 160, 165. We're going uphill here, 170. Oh, 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 oh. And I think it's limited there. I think that's all we're getting. 174 we've seen, and I've got to go out to the brakes. 174 is the limit of this car. And uh, let's try it again. The moment stretch. The numbers do not move on all that fast. But yeah, it shifts up towards the top gear and uh, my foot is flat to the floor. We got 174 on the dash. Are we gonna get 175? No, 174. So that would be about 108 miles per hour. Oh, there we go, 175. I think I know 175 is 109 miles per hour. 176. But this is literally, uh, I, think, I think it's limited. I think that's all we're gonna get today. I don't know how fuel efficient it's going to be at that speed, considering that we're still driving two and a half tons. But it's actually, decently quiet, not that much in terms of wind noise, despite having ginormous mirrors. Just keep your foot flat to the floor and uh, cruise away. We're sitting in a traffic jam. That's never fun, but the slightly amusing thing for me right now is that when cars are right behind us, you can't actually see the car that pulls up right behind because they're so low in comparison to the flatbed at the back that all you see is the roof line and then it's a case of trying to guess the car. I also didn't show you the various bits that you have up here. So for the rear window, um, just have a look towards the back as I press to open the rear window. That actually goes sideways. Um, you get that going. 
Then we've got the blind. So if I close the blind over the top, the full glass roof gets covered up, but we don't really want that, so let's keep it open. And then we've also got the tilt functionality for the front part, it just opens and closes like that. And of course, we've got the full sunroof, which we can open should we wish to. Oh, there's a little deflector there. Comes up as well. And it is a lovely day. Just a shame we're not really going anywhere very quickly today. Um, I'm actually going to close it. I'm not the biggest fan of sunroofs. I love having glass, like a glass panoramic roof to look up through. But that all works pretty much as it should. The touch screen here, I mean, we've got it split between two different modes, but you can you can imagine that you can change just about everything and, and go through a whole different things. And then you've got a few hotkeys here. So you can actually load the backup camera while you're driving. So you could actually use that to see what car is following behind you. And then you've got your heated steering wheel, vented and heated seats uh, for the driver, the passenger. I guess when you get to a certain speed, it closes itself back up. But I'm kind of like getting comfortable driving the American way, hand on the steering wheel, nice and chilled. We've actually got a grab handle just up here. Um, I guess if you're doing some serious off-roading. And then we've got our raise and lower the suspension. You know, we don't need aero mode while we're chilling. So I guess if you push that up, you can see it then starting to uh, change the mode. Outside of that though, it's all pretty self-explanatory. I guess you'd expect that to be the case. Um, loads and loads and loads of storage. I still can't get over the fact that there are six cup holders. Um, but there are, and uh, infinity billion different storage buckets for just about everything you could possibly want to store away. Now that we're in the countryside, a few turns. Obviously, this thing is not exactly supposed to be the most dynamic car in the world, but I tell you what you do get. When you're sitting in here for a long journey, like we've just been doing, you get a massive sense of just being up high in a big, powerful thing. You feel kind of this invincibility that comes from being in the pickup in this high form factor and all the cars that go by where you just see kind of the roof lines going past at your shoulder level or the small hatchbacks that literally are below the window kind of in their entirety and even a Mercedes van that's normally pretty tall when that goes past us it's like this high um, and here we are just cruising along enjoying the drive enjoying the ride some spectacular scenery here actually this is what I love about cruising through Germany you just find some amazing views uh, wherever you go and then in this of course if I uh, just slow it down a touch when you put your foot down a <laughs> oh, whole lot of noise whole lot of noise the numbers yeah they don't rise all that fast um, we've seen how well and how quickly the car can drive but um, I'm not really sure what else there is to say without trying to use it to tow something or go into a big massive off-road environment and I do realize by the way I have actually previously driven two pickups this is my third pickup experience um, so I did slightly teleporky earlier on in the video but nonetheless I've had a fairly entertaining time I do think the interior could have some nicer materials and generally be um, a little bit higher quality um, but it's quite an entertaining driving experience being in this kind of car. And like I said at one point earlier on, it does drive much more like a normal car than I expected it to in my mind. And uh, I suppose that's a testament to the engineering and the technologies involved and the suspension and the setup of that kind of thing that despite the weight, despite, despite the size, it manages to drive in a fairly normal way. Well, the weather today is absolutely stunning. The sunshine is out in force, and now I've brought the Ram to some slightly more Ram-appropriate terrain, a little bit lost in the woodland. But let me show you a few more things that I have discovered about the car while I've been driving it. The first of which is something that I've never seen before, and of course, opening the door, the side steps come out. But just down here, you have these buttons, which actually, if I tuck my feet back in, move the pedal set. The brake pedal and the throttle pedal actually adjust their position with a motor. I've not seen that before. Maybe there are other cars out there that have those, but I've never filmed one that I'm aware of. In front of us, a fun thing, a fun small detail, especially if you're a Brit going backwards and forwards across the continent, is that all you have to do with the speedometer showing is press OK, and it jumps between miles per hour, kilometers per hour. And then up here, you have a few different screens you can go through um, and change different bits and pieces and see it all there. And that's all quite nice with a bit of a background, all well displayed. Um, and yeah, as you can see, 18.2 liters per 100 kilometers, which isn't actually all that bad given we've been going pretty quick down the German autobahns, or at least pretty quick when you consider that the engine uh, is a fairly large V8 going on. In Europe, it's not actually offered uh, with the lower spec engine at all. You can just get uh, the, full, uh, the full one up there. So if I just switch this off, my seat moves backwards, 
screen tucks away. I guess we've been through everything we've got up here um, in terms of how all this is working. The wireless charger is this, so when you put the driver's phone just here, it's wirelessly charging. Um, and you can see we've been using some of the ports there for plugging things in. Step out on the side steps. I just want to show you a little bit more uh, in the rear of the car. Of course, I demonstrated the way the seats folded earlier, but even in here, You've got the repeat of all the USB ports, even another full charging socket. Uh, you've also got see, heated seats for the rear seats, but a pretty comfortable place to be sat. I mean, if I just swing back here, of course, that's already actually moved itself back from my driving position. And I've still got this much room going on in front of me. Um, there's no shortage of space, and obviously with the large glass roof. Look at that lovely, lovely day. Um, it's not claustrophobic back here in the slightest either. Climbing back out, more door pockets, stowage. There's so many storage pockets and places to put things inside this vehicle. You would not believe it. Absolutely never going to run out of space whatsoever. Haven't really touched on the exhaust tailpipes. Look at how beefy those things are down there. Massive, massive pipes on either side. Um, European tow hook fitted by AEC because it's actually a different tow hook than you have out in the USA. I didn't realize before that it was a different system over here in Europe but it's just a bit of a beast really um, standing behind this thing I feel a bit small compared to the usual cars I'm filming where the roof of them would be somewhere down here or something completely different but Ram Laramie 4x4 imported by AEC and it's a big thanks to them that I've been able to drive this today as I delicately and gingerly walk around <laughs> to navigate through to the front of the truck here picking up some flies unsurprisingly with the way we're driving today but all very much hardcore off-roading this car with the off-road package which gives you the skid plates underneath um, and uh, the sport appearance pack that paints it all up very nicely too so i think i'm going to leave that one there i've had a really interesting experience actually driving this quite a lot better in terms of a dr car to actually drive than i initially expected loaded with a lot of equipment which i guess i knew from the paperwork but wasn't also really expecting so nicely surprised. Yes, there are some materials that aren't great. Yes, it's not great for flying down the German autobahns, but it's built for a purpose to have lots of luggage capacity or stuff to, or space to carry around stuff with you, to tow things, to just be a car you jump in and drive around. And from that end, it does a pretty good job of it, doesn't it really? So quite an experience for me, a great day out. We've got a bit of driving still ahead of us. You can probably see there are lots of flies and bugs around me here in the woodland. So we'll head back out towards the main roads, but thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.